Thank you very much. We turn now to topical questions, and question number one is from Oliver Mundell. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what support it's providing to the workforce of Pinnies in Annan. Minister Paul Wheelhouse. I know the member will share my shock and deep concern about the announcement by Young Seafood that they intend to cease production at their Pinnies of Annan site. Well, as the member is aware, uh, statutory consultation is now underway and therefore we should not prejudge the, the outcome. We recognise that any such cessation of production would be devastating for the dedicated and highly experienced workforce at the site and could have profound implications for the economic and social well-being of Annan and the wider community in Annandale and Eskdale. I want to make absolutely clear my commitment and that of the Scottish Government to doing all we can and with all the resources available to us and our partner agencies in working to seek to maintain production at the Pinney site and retain as many of the jobs as possible. I've held a number of early discussions, including with Young Seafood uh, Management and the, with the Trade Union Unite, and have established an action group with membership, including Dumfries and Galloway Council, our enterprise and skills agencies, and industry representatives, to explore all viable options uh, to protect employment and repeat my commitment that we will leave no stone unturned to try and find a solution. I'm visiting the Pinnies plant on Thursday to meet with the Chief Executive of Young Seafoods, uh, Mr Bill Showalter, and I will convey our concern about the situation and reinforce the message that we are keen to work with Youngs uh, to secure employment at the site. I will also meet representatives of the workforce and will assure them that the Scottish Government and, and our partners will provide all the support we can during this difficult time. Oliver Mundell. I thank uh, the Minister for that uh, answer and for the work uh, he's done uh, to date. I think it's very important that we've managed to build uh, some cross-party consensus around uh, what is uh, the most significant thing to happen in the Dumfrieshire constituency since my election. Does he uh, believe that there is a willingness from Youngs uh, to retain uh, production on the site? And from the conversations he's had so far, what options have been explored with the company? Minister. Well, uh, can I echo the point that's been made by uh, Oliver Mundell that we are very pleased that there is a cross-party consensus on this issue. It will help enormously the workforce to know that we're all behind them, but also it will help our efforts to try and secure a positive outcome. And I, I particularly welcome the activities of Mr Mundell, Joe McAlpine, Colin Smith and other local members in working uh, with the Scottish Government constructively to explore all, all possible solutions. In terms of the willingness of youngs to engage with us, we can take them at their word. They, they have said that they will... Uh, work with us closely and had assumed in terms of making the original decision that perhaps some options weren't available to them so they're willing to reopen that discussion. Clearly uh, two of the three main contracts have been lost to other businesses, one fortunately in Scotland, another nearby in Carlisle, uh, but that does mean it's going to be difficult to sustain all the employment there unless we find alternative sources of, of uh, business for the plant uh, with other retailers perhaps or if we can find another occupier to come in in the event that the plant uh, is, is to close. So obviously we have to wait the outcome of the statutory consultation before taking forward some aspects of the work, but I want to reassure Oliver Mundell that we are very much focusing on uh, trying to look at all options at this moment in time, and we'll do everything we can working with local members to try and provide a viable future for the site. Oliver Mundell. I thank uh, the Minister for that answer. Um, my understanding is that there are four uh, parties who've expressed at least early interest in the site and I wondered if I could seek the Minister's reassurance at this point that uh, those uh, potential buyers will be entitled uh, to help and support from the government's agencies and also that any grants or financial incentives uh, that can be uh, put in place will be put in place should those buyers decide to move forward. Minister. I can certainly give uh, Mr Mundell, subject to all the, the due diligence I, I would hope he would expect would have to be undertaken any grant application, that we will certainly be offering all possible financial support that we can within the straight aid limits that we have to operate within. Gilead Seafoods is unfortunately, as, as I know Mr Mundell is aware, is affected by a particularly tight constraint around state aids considerations and a de minimis limit but other food production has a much greater scope for support and we are looking at a number of interested parties, not all of them in the seafood area, and so we will certainly look to see what support we can give and it will be treated with the highest priority to try and provide secure employment for those at the site. We know how vulnerable the economy of Annandale and Estdale is and a loss of jobs on this scale would be the equivalent of something like 25,000 in the context of Edinburgh. So it goes without saying we recognise the significance to his constituents. Joe McAlpine. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, the Minister will be aware that Penny's sole customer under Young's was Marks and & Spencer's and had been for several years. 
I appreciate that groceries regulation is a reserved matter and that exclusivity of supply is not actually prohibited in the Grocers Code of Conduct. But does the Minister agree with me that while such arrangements may seem beneficial when demand is high, they can have very negative effects when there are other market challenges? And what does he think can be done to address this? Minister. Well, I very much agree, um, Presiding Officer, with the sentiment of, of what uh, Joan McAlpine says there. We, we do recognise that there are commercial considerations here, um, but I do identify with the point that, that Joan McAlpine has said in the respect that um, where we have a plant being dedicated effectively to one client, then clearly if any work is lost on that client, it means, means that plant is particularly vulnerable. And so we are looking to engage with uh, Marks and Spencers in this particular scenario, uh, and indeed uh, seeking to meet with Marks and Spencers senior management team this week, if we can do so, to fully understand their perspective and to get uh, to the bottom of this. We have had some initial conversations with Marks and Spencers, but uh, want to speak to, to, uh, to them on the specific issue about single, single uh, company sites. And I uh, agree with the member, this situation is starkly illustrated in this case, and the risks associated with having a single client site uh, is obviously horribly exposed in the context of what's happened at Annan. Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. When you add agency and seasonal workers to the, the permanent workforce, that the potential job losses, if pennies closes, is likely to be near a 700, which I know the Minister is aware would be an absolute economic tsunami for that community with its size. Well, the first priority is to use the 45-day consultation to convince Youngs to change their closure decision and, if unsuccessful, to find a buyer for the site. Does the Cabinet Secretary share the concerns of the local community that one of the reasons any job losses would be so disastrous is the fact that there are still fundamental weaknesses in the local economy in terms of poor infrastructure, low pay and a lack of alternative large employers that still so desperately need to be tackled? Minister. I, absolutely. I, I, do, I do identify with that latter point that Colin Smith uh, has mentioned. We clearly are, are taking forward proposals for a South of Scotland enterprise agency, and that is a medium to long term uh, uh, mission there to try and transform the economy of the South. Clearly, in the immediate period, we've got a more uh, severe challenge to us in the context of Annan. If, if all 450 permanent jobs were to be lost, and indeed the seasonal jobs, the October to December period, which is, is the peak period of production, uh, were to be lost as well, then that would have very significant consequences for the area. And so one of the vir virtues of having the action group that we've established is that we can not just look at the specifics around uh, the particular impact of the plant closure, but also look to see if there's anything out of this process where we can try and do something to strengthen the economy in Annan. Uh, and of course, there are other communities around Annan that are affected as well, as I'm sure Colin Smith knows, such as Gretna and, and Lockerbie, where a number of the staff uh, work, f uh, work uh, at the plant. We know that the vast majority of staff are concentrated in a 10-mile area, so clearly job losses in that scale will have a huge impact on Anna. And question number two, Ian Gray. To ask the Scottish Government for what reason it has called in the planning application for a substation on the site of the former Kakenzi power station. Minister Kevin Stewart. Thank you, President Officer. Um, as Planning Minister, I called in this application as it clearly raises issues of national importance. The Kakenzi power station site is a strategic site in the National Planning Framework 3, which was published in 2014. The framework recognises Kikenze as an important hub with significant opportunities for renewable energy related investment and identifies two national developments relating to the site. The framework states that Kikenze is part of the high voltage energy transmission network, which is listed as a national development. Consent and associated marine licenses were granted in 2014 uh, for the Inchcape offshore wind farm and a grid connection agreement is in place to connect to the Kikenze site. The planning application is in relation to the electricity substation required to make that connection. There is a deadline in quarter one of 2019 for a bid for UK funding for the Inchcape development through the contract for difference process. To be eligible, all permissions and consents must be in place. Calling in the planning application gives a greater chance of a timely decision ahead of the funding deadline. The reporter will consider local views, including the local development plan, and the calling in of this application does not predetermine the outcome of the planning process. Ian Gray. Well, this site is of strategic importance, all right. It's the biggest opportunity for economic development and job creation in local living memory. The proposed substation is right on the waterfront and could jeopardize the potential development of this site as a port. Its future should be decided locally by local councillors 
who understand that potential and are accountable to local people. That's what happened in 2014 when planning permission for the same substation on a different part of the site was granted by East Lothian Council. Why was a local decision okay in 2014, but this time the Minister thinks he knows better? Minister. Thank you, President Officer. As I um, highlighted in my first answer to Mr Gray, um, there is an issue here of potential national significance. Uh, and we, uh, as a government, recognise uh, the importance of local decision-making uh, and we use call-in powers sparingly. Uh, but on this occasion, uh, we have decided to call in. Um, we will ensure that the reporter uh, from the Planning and Environmental Appeals Division uh, will they in ensure that the community are given the appropriate time to consider and make comment on this application and that community views are taken into account prior uh, to them making a rep recommendation uh, to me as Minister. Ian Gray. The other issue here, of course, is that in 2016, this project was bought by Red Rock, a company owned by the Chinese State Development and Investment Corporation, whom the First Minister was meeting last week at the very moment the planning decision was called in. Can the Minister understand that it looks to my constituents as if he is prepared to ride roughshod over their interests and aspirations in order to protect the interests and aspirations of a Chinese-backed project which will create not one job in East Lothian? If he wants to convince them otherwise, will he do that now by returning this decision where it belongs to East Lothian Council? Minister. As uh, Mr Gray is well aware, um, uh, presiding officer, um, I uh, made the decision to call in on the 4th of April, uh, which was related to East Lothian Council on the 9th of April, uh, before uh, the First Minister um, was in China. Uh, and we have been absolutely clear that there was no connection whatsoever to the First Minister's visit to China. Uh, consideration of planning uh, cases are focused on the merits of the case. The identity of the applicant is not a planning consideration relevant to the assessment of any process. Thank you. Move on to question three, Claire Hockey. Thank you, presiding officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to the closure of the Two Sisters factory in Cambus Lang. Minister Paul Wheelhouse. I am extremely disappointed at the decision by Two Sisters to close its facility in Cambus Lang. Uh, Claire Hockey will be aware, as we were in contact on a number of occasions during the consultation phase, that we worked very hard to try to avert this closure. I have been actively involved in discussions with the company and stakeholders, having met with Jeremy Hudson and having written to Mr Ranjit Singh, Two Sisters founder, offering every support to retain the site at Cambus Lang. The uh, Cabinet Secretary for Economy, Jobs and Fair Work, Keith Brown, uh, has met with Unite the Union, uh, the Scottish Government, Scottish Enterprise, Skills Development Scotland and South Lanarkshire Council all have worked intensively with the company to explore every possible option to secure a sustainable future for the site and to safeguard uh, jobs in Camas Lang. Unfortunately, despite all these efforts, uh, the company has made its decision to close the site and I greatly regret that this is the case. However, I want to assure Claire Hockey that uh, our partnership action for continuing employment to our PACE team has agreed a programme of support activities with the company which will provide support for all affected employees as they look to find alternative employment. And as Ms Hockey may be aware, it has a tremendous record in helping those affected by redundancy. Claire Hockey. I thank the Minister for his answer. I, along with many of my constituents, was extremely concerned by the announcement last week that the factory will close in August. The impact on the staff affected and the local community could be devastating. Several members of the same families work there. Many of the workforce have been employed at the factory for decades and small businesses rely not only on the workers using their services but also the Two Sisters Company for contracts. Can the Minister detail what support the Scottish Government can provide to my constituents at this very difficult and troubling time? Minister. I, I, I certainly can. I mean, uh, we have um, 
uh, I've just, be, just been discussing in the context of Anne and been talking about an action group in the context of the job shock there in, in Dumfries and Galloway. My proposal would be to uh, discuss with South Lanarkshire Council how best to take forward collaborative action in, in supporting the local community affected by these job losses and we'll look to discuss with uh, the uh, Council uh, whether there are uh, advantages in taking forward a similar sort of action uh, group uh, response in response to the job losses of two sisters. We have um, obviously wider than that uh, aspiration to try and uh, get pay support in, which I've uh, alluded to in my first answer, that the full programme of pay support activities has been agreed with management at Two Sisters, which is not always the case, so that is a positive, uh, positive in itself, because we know it has a, a profoundly important impact for those individuals affected. But the Scottish Government has also committed uh, over half a billion pounds for the next 20 years to the Glasgow City Region deal, and will look to support delivery of a programme of investment to stimulate economic growth and create jobs right across the city region. Region, which obviously includes South Lanarkshire as well, and we'll look to see to what extent those investments can also support the economy. But I, I look to work with uh, Claire Hockey and other members who have an interest in this. I know there are members across the chamber uh, to make sure we work together and uh, draw down as much support as we can from Scottish Enterprise and our other enterprise and skills agencies to help local businesses, because uh, Claire Hockey is absolutely right. It's not just the company itself, but the wider supply chain in the area who are affected, and to identify those companies that are vulnerable, uh, working with um, a two systems to identify their suppliers and look to see what we can do to support them through this. Claire Hockey. I thank the Minister for um, his very detailed reply to my question, but will the Minister commit to engaging with all relevant agencies, including South Lanarkshire Council, with a view to looking at convening an action group similar to the one organised in Annan? And can he advise me of what the Scottish Government can do to support the future use of the site so that jobs can be created and supported in Campus Lang? Minister. Yes, uh, absolutely, Presiding Officer. I, I, I commit to Claire Hockey that uh, we will take forward that discussion with South Lanarkshire Council and look to see uh, if we can con uh, convene a, an action group. I don't want to prejudge that because the Council themselves may have a different view as to how best we work together. It's not always uh, it, it, it is, uh, the outcome that we require an action group to deliver an impact. Uh, we've had several examples in Lan Lanarkshire in recent years where we've managed to successfully get uh, those employees affected by redundancy programmes work before they've even lost, uh, lost their jobs. So um, we will wait to see what uh, comes from that discussion. But in terms of the um, a wider uh, interest that she alludes to in terms of future use of the site, clearly that's another issue we can take forward with the Council. I uh, wouldn't want to tread on uh, the Council's toes in terms of its responsibilities in economic development, but we'd be keen to support, as we're doing in Paisley, with the transfer of jobs from Chivas from Paisley to uh, Dumbarton, uh, supporting uh, the local authority in looking at options to master plan a site and see if there's anything the Scottish Government can do to make sure that a, a valuable site can be used for further employment opportunities. James Kelly. Thank you. Do, does the Minister agree with me that Marks and Spencers, the main customer, uh, are complicit in this closure plan, uh, in a sense supporting the, mover of, the moving of poultry operations to one site in England? And will he give consideration to the reasonable suggestions from Gerard Kiln, the local MP, to set up a task force involving all parties and relevant agencies and also in order to look at solutions to avert this closure? Yes, sir. Well, on, on the latter point, uh, I've, as I've addressed to Clear Hockey, I think the first thing I want to do is speak to the local authority, South Lanarkshire Council, to find out what they would like to see happen. I, I take on board the point that Jed Killen has made and repeated by James Kelly today that sometimes the task force approach is, is valid and it can work effectively as it did with the Steel Task Force. In other scenarios, an action group can be fleeter afoot and move more quickly uh, to identify opportunities, and that's what we're doing in Hoyk and now in, in Annan. So uh, we'll have a discussion with the Council on that point. As to the, the issue around Marks and Spencers, as I've alluded to in response to an earlier question regarding uh, the Pennies plant in Annan and the role of MNS there, that we're keen to engage with MNS, and certainly we can take forward discussions with the company about uh, the, the, the business model they're deploying and what impact it's having in situations like this. But uh, I, I want to listen to MNS before I start to, to, to take any conclusions as to how this situation has been arrived at. I hope Mr Kelly will understand. I don't want to um, uh, shoot first and ask questions later. I'd rather listen and, and hear what uh, views MNS can put forward. But I certainly take on board his point, and we clearly are worried about the vulnerability that plants have to single clients. And when you lose tens of millions of pounds of work in one go, that can clearly have a, a massive impact on employment. Thank you very much. That concludes topical questions. And we turn now uh, to a statement by Shona Robertson on NHS Tayside. 
And the Cabinet Secretary will, of course, take questions after a statement. So I would encourage all members who wish to ask a question to press their request to speak buttons now.